because I still have mine. <laughs> this is But nothing in this world is easy. The bride came upon her engagement. Upon her engagement went to her mother and said, I have found a man just like dad. Her mother replied, so what you want from me? Sympathy? <laughs> Vedanta seeks to educate and discipline the intellect. It relies mainly on the practice of dispassion. He said, why should a person make spiritual quest? He wants joy. Because he cannot get the pure joy, he is eating from the garbage cans outside. So instead of telling him, don't eat from the garbage can, have him test somehow the superior joy. Then this will be left behind. Same argument in the Bhagavad Gita. Do not give up this world. This world which you feel bothersome for you, your manufactured mental world. Change your thoughts, attitudes, and your desires. Wait when one day the world will give you up, thinking you cannot be used anymore. The world will be a temptation for you so long the world knows you are one of its customers. When the worldly discover this person cannot be used for the worldly pursuits, it will drop up. So don't renounce. Don't run away. The world will run away from you one day. The reverse being said. Spiritual lung, Vedanta system ships cannot be generated by mechanical means. Withdrawal of the mind is not possible unless the mind cooperates with you. Forcible control can rouse the mind untimely. Before spiritual longing has matured. Through pranayama, control of breath, diet, posture, you rouse the mind. But what you will do with it? Unless your motivation and urge for going forward toward the goal is intense. It will be deadly to have a highly concentrated mind, but not enough motivation to go toward the goal. It will violently fall back. Vedanta interprets yoga's practices differently. It says, silence is not a restraint of speech, but dwelling on a Brahman. Solitude is interior, not external. Real posture is that in which the mind flows toward God spontaneously. Absorption of the mind in God, knowing it alone abides, it's called true withdrawal. Those who give up this supremely purifying thought of Brahman and God put their minds on sense object to live in vain. Those who try to control the mind through posture, breath, diet, 
are like those who hope to empty the ocean drop by drop with a blade of grass. The goal of self-knowledge, Vedanta system says, is not just release from the world, but the realization of the fact that all beings and things are visible and perceptible and nothing but God. To attain this knowledge, what is needed is remove ignorance, the root cause, not fight against the habits and tendencies and desires, all of which are numerous branches shooting forth from the root. The problem in the everyday life, the root in the depth, loss of contact. Other systems, counseling, understanding, diet, they are called palliative. They do not take away the root. Go for the root. What is the preferred way to achieve self-control then? The arguments in both in support of perceivable control of yoga and those of gradual control of Vedanta are equally strong. Two ways are equally time-honored and proven. However, the spiritual seekers are not of the same caliber and temperament. The way that is beneficial may not be the beneficial for another. The fitness to pursue the one or the other depends upon the competence of the individual seeker. and the prescription of the guide. Thank you. Om Jaranin Sarudang Deving Ramakishnan Jagat Guru Vada Padmetayo Sritva Pranavami Mahur Mahur we bow down to Mother Sardan, the great Master Sri Ramakrishna. We take refuge at their feet and bow down to them over and over again. Om, peace, peace be unto us and to all living beings. Thank you.